Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we're going to make the rectangle ink stations from my new Essentials of Printable Templates. And the last video we made the square, the single and the double. And it's a very long video, but I showed you two different ways to construct them. So the double is my favorite way to construct. And then when I made the single, I used construction strips, right? Isn't that what I did? Yeah. So I, I did it a little bit differently when I made the single one. So this is the one I'm using because um, it already had feet on it, but it's the same thing. But this is what we made in the video. Um, but anyway, so if you wanna see this method, uh, I will put a link to that video up here and down in the cards because I'm not going to do it in this video. Um, I'm just going to show you my favorite way to do it. And so just check that other video out if you need to do it a different way. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Okay, so these are templates that I made for my ink stations, my garbage bowls, and then there's a bonus uh, corner chomper stand in here. And so this is the second video. Uh, we did the square one already, and now we're going to do the rectangle. So the square one is, is mainly for the Distress inks, and uh, it, I don't know, actually, if there's any other square ones out there, really. I'm sure there are. I don't know. I don't have all the inks, so I don't know. But anyway, so we already did the square, so we did the single, right, and the double, and I did a lot of ex explaining in that video. That's why it's really, really long. <laughs> So this time we're going to do the rectangle and this one is made mostly for the archival style inks. Some, um, some other types of inks fit in here as well. So like the memento and it, they fit snug and you want that. Okay. If you're making one and you're like, mine won't fit in there, push it in and you want it to be snug because you want to be able to take the lids off easily. Right. Otherwise your lids are going to come, come, uh, or your ink pad's going to come up with your lid. So we're going to make the single and the double, right? And I am going to, I've already prepped for the double and I'm going to show you the single. So I think that instead of making both of them throughout the whole video, I'm just going to do one on camera and one off camera in each step, if that makes any sense. So what you need is some chipboard. This is medium weight chipboard. It is 30 point chipboard. It is about a sixteenth of an inch thick. I have an Amazon list specifically for this project and I will link it down in the description box. And you do not want to use heavy weight. You do not want to use corrugated cardboard. You do not want to use cereal box on its own. You can use like cereal box weight or even cereal boxes. You can glue two of them together and let it dry fully before you start cutting into it. And that'll be the, the um, thickness that you need. If you go thicker, it, nothing's gonna fit for their specific purposes. So there's the square one that's specifically for square. There's the rectangle for specifically for rectangle. And then there's the universal that things don't fit quite as snug. So you can, you, you can put anything you want in there. <laughs> so that one may not matter as much if you used a different weight, if you did the universal, but for the square and the rectangle, you need to use a certain weight or you need to use a certain thickness. Um, so you can build up your cereal boxes to get this thickness, which is really just two layers. Okay, so I'm gonna take the single rectangle pieces out of the workbook here, and we're gonna trace that. And then, where's the, and then the double, I'd already done the double. So I've already traced this out on the chipboard. I have cut them out and I have taped them back together again. So we're gonna do this one really quick. think obviously this is just a leftover scrap and I'm pretty sure this will work so when I cut these templates out the traceable part of the template I left those little squares there you don't you're not going to keep them on the chipboard but it does help you trace these out just a little bit easier I'll also put some timestamps down below in the video description if you want to jump around like okay jumper I've seen you do this part before okay so there's one and then I want to use this end to trace this one down here okay 
So then those are perfectly triced, right? So can you see both of them? So in the, in the end, we're not gonna be keeping these little squares, but it just makes it, just makes it easier to trace and to cut. So that's why I left them on there. So now I'm gonna grab my ruler and my cutting knife. This is a Scotch craft knife. And I'm gonna cut these out. Oh, actually, next step. I always do this to keep it straight. So when I am putting it back together, I do one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, that way when I go to tape it all back together, I know exactly which piece cut, got cut from which piece. Do you know what I mean? So I'm loving this ruler. I've talked about it a couple times now. And I've been using it for a long time because I was making a bunch of prototypes, um, making sure that the templates worked. And I really like it. What's nice about it is it's got the grippies. The grippies under, are on, on the bottom there underneath. I think it's a quilting ruler. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's a quilting ruler. But the ruler doesn't slide around. So that's what I like. Oh, I'm going to pull over my, my large garbage bowl. We haven't made this yet on camera, but we will. But you can basically do, you can make uh, all of these items the exact same way. So you don't have to wait for me. You can make this box using the templates the exact same way that we're making these little ink stations. So don't think you have to wait if you want to make yourself a garbage bowl. Okay, I went ahead and cut the smaller portion off camera, cut it out off camera. So now we're going to reassemble. And since I marked them, I know exactly where each piece is going to go. So I'm just going to use regular tape. And it's just kind of like an, an extra hand, a helping hand uh, at this stage. Now this is where you could use construction strips if you wanted to make it that way, which I have in the other video, the previous video, and there's a timestamp in the description box of that video for that method. So if you wanted to do it that way, you totally can. It also depends on your, you know, what uh, supplies you have available to you. So if you have like, if you have all the different sizes of tapes and the bigger sizes and all of that, it, that matters depending on how you're making it. So you can make it, it's either way, it's fine. This is my favorite method. This is the method that I find is the sturdiest. So that's why I use it. But either, either method is fine or any method. I'm sure there's other methods out there. So I'm just going to push these back together. Also, if you want to learn how to make this fabulous tape dispenser, I have a, a video. I'll link it up here and down below. It's called the fancy, fancy tape dispenser or something. I forget what I called it, but I mean, you know, these are items that, you know, do you need this pretty garbage bowl on your workspace? No, but isn't it so much prettier than just having a pile of garbage sitting there or this tape dispenser it was green to begin with so it wasn't super ugly you know like the black ones are you know not very attractive but isn't this much more uh, pleasant to look at while you're working i think it's just my opinion do you need do you need this ink station right do you need this no it does keep your ink and your blending tool together and it's just prettier it just looks like a piece of furniture on your workspace i just love it just love it um, I'm sorry I guess I guess I tried <laughs> I just like things to look pretty in the space that I'm at you know I'm here a lot like I'm in this space that, that piece is too big I'm in this space a lot so I like it to look pretty okay Then I'm just going to burnish this tape on here really quick. I also wanted to mention the first generation ink station was this one. And I made this one in 2019, early 2019, out of my Crafty Companion. And this one is more like a universal. It'll fit the square 
and it'll fit the rectangle ink pads and actually I think it'll fit almost anything I have um, yeah it does and it also fits you know the blending tool so this is if you have the crafty companion and you want to make a, a versa you know a universal ink station then you, you can use one of these this is also the second generation garbage bowl and i have a video where i made both of these i will link it up here and down below but i'm pretty sure i made them exactly the same as i'm making these um but they're they're just so pretty to look at you guys i just like them so much more than just your ink pad sitting there which is fine it's totally fine, but I like to have my blending tool and my ink pad right there together. It's not for stability or to keep it from moving around or anything like that. It's just for convenience and for pretty, prettiness. So here's the, this is the single rectangle ink station. And then here is the double rectangle ink station. And actually it's going to go like this. Okay. Those are the two. These two go together and these two go together. Okay, so this is the double, this is the single, exactly the same way. Next thing I need to do is put some tape on here. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna use the four inch roll again. What, let's see what this one is. Yeah. This is scrapbook.com tape. Um, if you don't have the four inch rolls and oh and what you want to do before I continue talking because I can talk I can talk a lot <laughs> You want to take that tape side or the the sides you put your numbers on and then put your tape on you want to put that down onto the adhesive side Of this tape so this is scrapbook.com tape and if you don't have all the different sizes of tape and you don't want to get all the different sizes you'd probably be better to get the eight and a half by 11 sheets and i will link their tape down below but this this size should do any of the projects that are in the set of templates okay so the essentials are kind of like a, a bare bones template set of templates and they don't have any background designs on them or anything like that it's just the plain templates and i really like that because i feel like these are fun things that I feel like are essential to have in your workspace. So that's why I created them so that everybody could, everybody could have some pretty garbage bows and ink stations in their space. And the other essential that I have is the uh, basic, um, not the basic, <laughs> the photo mats. Those, um, I have a video on those too. Actually, I don't, did I do a specific video? Yeah, I have a video on that. I'll put it up here and down below. And then I'm gonna go do another specific video on it when my, my stamp set gets back in stock. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me find it and show you. It is this stamp set right here that I designed and may may produced for me <laughs> and it's currently out of stock but hopefully it'll be back in stock and i will link it down below if you want to uh, if it's in stock you can purchase it uh but if it's not in stock you can um you can put your name on the list and they'll email you when they get it back in stock okay so this is my very first stamp set isn't it cool okay all right all right all right okay i'll do this one off camera but for now I am going to cut these squares off, but we're going to keep them because they go back on. Okay, so I got both of these covered and trimmed out, and I used the the four inch roll for these. Remember? Well, this one, the double, I used the six six inch roll for this large one, and you know how I keep all my pieces. Right, I keep them on sheets and stuff, and I have a whole, like, I have a whole pouch full of, of cutoffs and stuff that I've used over the years. And I found one, <laughs> believe it or not, that was on this sheet that fit this perfectly. So this was actually from my when I was making the Crafty Companion. So that this was from several years ago. This was what three, not two, two and a half years ago, something like that. Um, so yeah, so keep your scraps. Don't ever throw away. Like here's another large piece right here. 
I just stuck on the back of there. So I guess I probably could transfer it over to here and that way I could see it better. But anyway, that's for another day. So I always keep all my, my leftovers. Never throw away your leftover pieces. Okay, so after I, after I cut the little corners off, I burnished everything really good with my bone folder. And now, I'm going to try to find, oh, here we go, some white cardstock here. So I'm going to start with one piece. And we're going to put these on here. the backing off. I'm going to flip it over. I wonder if they'll both fit on here. I don't think so, but we can try. I doubt it. Let me see. Nope. It might have if I did it differently. Sometimes it might. I can't tell. Is that going to work or not? Yeah, I might be able to just use one piece. Let's see. Let's see. Just put it right up next to it. It'll be a little bit harder to get in between there, but let's try. Then I'm gonna burnish it. Flip it over and give it a burnish. It's, but it didn't cover the whole entire piece, but that is okay. And I'm gonna cut these out. Oh, that's not gonna work. Look, I need this piece. Hmm. It worked for them, but it didn't work for this. Well, shoot. Well, I'll just have to make some adjustments, Mona. I have to make a adjustment because I was trying to save paper. <laughs> shamey, shamey. But I only have to do one, one adjustment, so that'll be okay. I need to use that. To keep checking the monitor because the last time, the last video I filmed, I um, forgot to hit record. And I was, I think about 15 minutes went by. <laughs> Probably not 15, but. All right, how am I going to... I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and cut this corner off like this. So we'll just have a double thickness right there. So let me put a piece of tape here and I'm going to use a half inch, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna use a half inch. This tape here is the one that's from Cherry on Top. And one of my subscribers told me to wear it as a bracelet because it's really big. It's a really big roll of tape. <laughs> so, okay. All right, take the backing off. And then, Okay. 
hopefully, hopefully this will work out just fine. because we are eventually going to be cutting that anyway. So, boom, got it. All right, so then the next thing you want to do is take and burnish, or fold and burnish all of these side pieces. Okay, so I've got all that done and I went ahead and cut these corners, but I was going to do these on camera with you guys, so I'm going to take these little squares and put them back. You know what I didn't do? Did I burnish those? I don't remember if I burnished them or not. Oh, goodness. This is a big square. I feel like it. So I'm putting these little squares back into the corners because we need those paper pieces. Right, I mean, so why waste the tape when it's the perfect size for um, that little space there? No, I don't think I did. Makes me want to go back. See, that's still got the, see, it's still got the, I still have the, uh, my adjustment, my, what do we call that? My, my patch. <laughs> it's still there. Okay. So now what you want to do is you want to take and you want to pick a side, whether it's these two or these two, but you want to cut just right along that chipboard there. Just one, one slot. You don't want to cut the corner out. Just one, just cut it away from one side where it's like that, right? So you do that to all your pieces. Right, boop. And then you want to go in and this just makes it easier and neater. Just kind of make a little you know, a, a diagonal cut here, a diagonal cut on the edge, and then you can trim off a little bit of the bottom just to make it even. Okay, so I got it all, I got these already put together, but I got all the tape, all the, everything's cut, right? So then you wanna flip it over and push those tabs in to the top there, and then take the paper backing off of the tape. I did hit record, didn't I? Yep. <laughs> and then you want to bring the corners together. You just want them to meet and not overlap the chipboard pieces. You want to see the paper still in between, okay? So you just go ahead and put it all together like that. Oops, looks like I didn't trim my paper very good. We'll just smoosh it, all right? Okay, so then what you want to do is we're going to glue them together. So we're going to, the two matching sides is what we're going to glue together, right? So it's going to be like that. So I'm just going to take some arc letter glue you just kind of want a white glue, like a wet glue for this. You don't really want anything thick like Fabri-Tac because it's, you just don't need it. So then you just want to push them together and then clip them together so that they stay together. Like that and then the same for this.
Wow. When I was filming yesterday, I had the, the jitteries, the heebie-jeebies, not the heebie-jeebies, <laughs> the shakes. I, I promise you guys, I'm eating. I have eight. Okay. That one wants to be popping up, so I think we'll use a weight on this one. My good old rose quartz. So this time, um, I'm going to be matting them a little bit differently. So I am going to make sure I get these, all of these uh, nooks and crannies get some ink on them and this time I'm just going to use one drop of the reinker for the walnut stain Beep. because it will go far it will go far it will go far and then a whole bunch of water and then my water brush let's see that's probably I hope that's okay let me test it out yeah I just want it to be a little bit, I just want it to not be white, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to get in the nooks and crannies here. Oops, I better scoot that over just a hair. Now we are going to be wrapping these chipboards. the outer edges so some of this might get covered up and we just have to come back and touch it up but it's easier to do it now before glue and stuff gets all over the place and then you can do a little touch up later but it's really however however you want to do it whatever way you want to do it and if you were using a different color like you could use black you wouldn't have you could skip this step Oh, did I get it all? I did. Oh, okay. Alright, let me put that over there. Maybe that'll help keep that flat. Alright, I'm going to set this aside in case we need it in a little bit. And I'm going to move these aside. Put that back on there. Actually, before I move them too far. I need to take some measurements and I need to write some things down. So what you want to do is um, I'll start on this side. So you want to measure inside inside the chipboard to inside chipboard and this particular, yours could be slightly different. So mine is mine is five and four five and five eighths so I think what I'll do is go a little bit between five and a half and five and five eighths but I'm going to put five and a half inches by one and a half and I need two of those I also need one five and a half inch by one and an eighth and that'll go in the middle because remember in my last video if you watched it I made a slight boo-boo <laughs> for that middle piece and then what you need you'll need two of what you want to do is you want to measure outside to outside of this chipboard right and add an at least an inch so I'm gonna I'm gonna have mine at seven inches so I need two pieces at seven inches by by an inch and a half and that's for the block oh, I guess I better do the other one too this one is the double and then the single would be so I'm gonna say one and three fourths. No, I'm going to say one and seven eighths ish. So I need 
two at one and seven eighths inch by an inch and a half. Is that right? No, two and seven eighths. Two and seven eighths. And then I need one at two and seven eighths by an inch and one eighth. And then I need, it should be the same measurement as the other one. So seven inches. So I need two, seven inch by one and a half. So basically I need four, seven inch by one and a half. So four, seven inch by one and a half. Right? And then all the other ones are different. Okay. So I'm going to get a piece of white cardstock. Let me move this out of the way. And I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut some strips. I'm going to do one and a half inch. I'm going to do four one and a half inch strips, cutting it this way. I guess I could have cut it down to seven first. Now all of these pieces, every single piece, we are going to score a half an inch. So I'm on the larger pieces, well on, on all of them, I try to, I to go from the outside, it's just easier. So I'm going to score these all at one, Whoop. and I'm going to try to stay in track. <laughs> so then I'm going to go through and I'm going to fold, uh, fold and burnish all these pieces and then I'll be right back. I have to change my, my battery. Okay, so I've got all of these taped. Not very well, actually. <laughs> I got all of these taped and I left a few so I could tape them with you and I'm going to use several different size tapes. In my Facebook group I had some people ask me about making a essential for a container to hold all of your tape sizes and I already have that with my crafty companion these mini racks. I have a video. Let me show you my other one. Hang on just a second. And they sit up in my Crafty Companion. Um, but I have a video on how I made these. So there's different sizes. I will link that up here and down below. But it's part of my Crafty Companion. But maybe I will make one to match all of my other essentials. Maybe I'll make one um, just from using my Crafty Companion. I'll make one, a couple or something. So that you can have one that you can sit, put feet on and sit on your station and it match everything else. Maybe we'll do that in video. Maybe I'll think about that. But this is where, look at, these are all my sizes except for the larger ones. Um, from two inch on down is in here. So I have, I have quite a bit, <laughs> I have quite a bit of sizes. But this is how I store and keep them from rolling about all over the place. But okay, so I'm going to need a, I'm gonna use a half an inch. This is cherry on tops half an inch and it's it's not quite a half an inch it is a little bit smaller so I'm going to put that on the half inch side on all the pieces and then this is my right angle tool that I'm using to cut the tape and oh yeah this is the so this one on all the pieces they get the same half inch tape on that half inch mark that we scored but this one is the shorter, the smaller one, the one and one eighths. So um, I used the half an inch for that. Whoa. Half an inch for that. And then on the smaller ones, the one and one eighths, there's only two pieces. I used, this is a cherry on top too. This is five eighths of an inch. And it fits perfectly on the other side like that. Now, if you don't have all the sizes, you just put multiple you just do multiple of the same, whatever you have. And then for the bigger pieces, the one and a half inch pieces, I'm gonna use the one inch tape. These are all from a cherry on top. I will link them down below in the description box. And this is the one where you get like double the amount of tape and the, and the roll is giant. So just beware. It's a very big roll, <laughs> very, very big roll. It's like double what you get with scrapbook.com or with um, score tape. And then you just want to burnish. So these are all been burnished 
And now we can start putting our boxes together. So I'm gonna put these two aside. And I'm gonna do the big one off camera, but I'll do the small one with you. So I'm gonna need these small pieces here, and then two of the long, wait, yeah, two of the long pieces. <laughs> this is what I need. And those go to that. And this will go to that, and this goes here. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take these smaller pieces. Well, let me take these off. You could, if you wanted to, you could reinforce this little seam right here with a piece, a one inch piece of paper uh, with tape on both sides, but it's not necessary. All right, I'm going to remove the paper backing from that half inch part. And I'm going to, whoa. I'm going to hold it up and the end I'm going to stick to the part that's got the tape backing on still and I'm just going to slide it down onto the onto that half inch piece then I'm going to remove the tape backing from that half inch piece or from that one inch piece and I'm going to scoot that up like that then I'm going to gently roll it over now it looks to me like oh no it'll be fine so I thought it was going to be too wide and if that's the case you just want to angle it and that's fine and then you just want to gently burnish everything and it's really nice because it gives a nice crisp finish on there so we want to do the same thing to this side it over and around and then burnish now we're going to wait to do this part because we're going to do the long sides next and this time you want to take the one inch tape backing off and you want to sit your ink station right on that half inch piece try to center it and then pull that one inch part up okay so now you have something that looks like that I'm gonna actually gonna go ahead and remove this half inch tape now so now what you want to do is you want to roll your box in order to get that to go around that open that open area there so you just want to roll it so you're kind of sealing the chipboard in All right and then I'm just pinching it just a little just so it's nice and neat and then we're going to take our scissors and we're going to make a little triangle notches and we're going to fold those over then I'm going to pull those triangle notches where's my piece of paper in towards the box just in case it needs to fill in a little bit um, a little bit of that corner so we'll come back in a second and burnish that so the same thing on top here we are going to do the little triangle notches I think I get shaky because I'm holding it up in the air I think that's what I've decided is my problem <laughs> I don't know why it's like every time I hold this up in the air I start to shake all right, we pull the triangle notches in. Then we want to fold this down, burnish it really quick. Try to burnish it right there on that middle piece. And then we're going to do these angled notches there and fold over. And then we're going to fold those two little flaps down. So, burnish. Yeah, right? And we're gonna do the same on the side. We're gonna take the one inch paper backing off first. So if you're using several sizes, just the larger side first, 
And we're going to lay this on here, center it, and then pull that up. And flip it to the side, take the half inch tape binding, or tape binding, half inch backing off, and then we're going to roll it this way, roll it that way, pinch, pinch. Do the triangle. Oh, that happens where it'll come off with the scissors, and that's okay. Pull that one in towards. Okay, and then the same up top. Whoops, I didn't do a very good angle. Okay, happen again. This one. Oh, let me get this corner. Put it down. Gently burnish. Fold those little wings down. And then the last piece is this middle piece, and you just take all the tape off. There's no point in leaving any of it on there. But you want to take that half inch part and kind of, uh-oh, see this is too long, so I'm going to cut, and I'm going to get a little shorter and see if that's enough. Oops, still a little too long, a little shorter. Okay, so I'm going to slide that down just like this, right? So slide it there, and then I'm going to roll it to the other side. And then you just want to burnish. So I'm going to do this one off camera, but same deal. But I think what I'll do really quick is I am going to print off some mats. Whoa, but I do want to take a sec and make sure that I've got all... I'm going to do my mats a little bit different. The last time I kept it all together, and that's fine too, but not everybody likes, you know, it doesn't always work out perfectly perfect that way. So this is another way to do it. I'm just going to show you here in just a second once I once I get them printed. I'm just going to cut them all into individual pieces and then uh, oops, what's what we got there? Excess. And then attach them down that way. So if the other way doesn't suit you. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do I'm going to do the same steps to this big one. Then I'm also going to come in here and ink my edges. So I'm going to ink the whole thing up like this. All of my edges. And if you don't, you know, if you don't like the distressed ink look, then you don't have to do this part. Or if you use black cardstock or brown cardstock, you don't have to do this part. Feel free to use your favorite. Oh, I didn't burnish the back side, did I? So 
So they end up being very sturdy little little trays, little ink stations, so and garbage bottles for that matter. Okay, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing to this other one, and then I'm gonna print out their mats and and then I'll be back. Okay, so I printed the mats for both of these and I'll show you just real quick. The single rectangle ink station, the outside and inside mats are on the same page. So I printed it onto this pattern paper, which again, I will link down below, but it's a set, it's 12 by 12 paper and it's a set of, uh, what did I say, eight, 10, 10, 10 pages. And I just did four to a page and they're, but they're actually 12 by 12. So I just print them eight and a half by 11, but it's an Etsy shop. I'll link it down below in case you're interested, but this is the one I'm using. I just think it is so pretty. I just think it is so, so pretty. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I printed this out. This is 80 pound cardstock. And I'm going to cut that out with you guys. But then for the double ink station, I printed the outside mats in that in that um, decorative paper. And then the inside mats, which is this page, I printed on my one of my scripty papers. So I've already cut those out, obviously. So those are ready to go. I'll have everything linked down below, my scripty papers and that pretty uh, printable, digital printable paper. So I will, I will attach these mats, and there's all the leftover paper. <laughs> I will attach these mats off camera on, the, on, the, um, on this one. So I'm just going to sit them together over there. Okay. So... In the other video, when I did the square, let me see if I can reach it real quick. Ugh. We left all of these pieces attached and just kind of shoved it in. And sometimes it works perfectly like this one. This one worked perfectly, well, almost perfect. There's a few times where, whoops, there's a few times that the corner got a little wonky. Um, and, and then the double one, it did a little wonkiness too. So. If you don't like that look, if you don't want it to be non-perfect, you know, then you want to cut them apart. So that's what we're going to do with this one. And for this one, I'm just going to mat the inside and outside the same paper. Oops. I'll just cut that crooked. Oh, well. It's a good thing it doesn't have to be exact, right? Cut all these apart and then I will be back with you and don't forget that on this big precision paper trimmer you want to line up that brown line that distress line with the metal edge not the plastic edge there's been some discussion in my Facebook group about it and uh, some people get frustrated because they line it up with the with the plastic and not the metal and so they didn't like it because of that. But if you just, you, it t takes a minute to get used to doing. Um, but if you're just wanting to cut, let's say you're wanting to cut a three inch piece, you just line it up to the three inch mark and you don't have to worry about this metal edge. So the only time it matters is when you're cutting something out like this, when you have to line up to a line. Does that make sense? So keep that in mind but I find it easy to do because I just match the top and the bottom with that metal edge and I find it easy so it's just a personal preference but I have this linked in my Amazon list because it's my favorite it's my favorite 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 and then you may want to take the minute to go through and just get rid of that white paper edge uh, with your ink just really quick uh, before you start attaching. So I'm going to do that really fast and then I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I have this one all covered front and back or inside and outside and I did make a piece of clear acetate to go here and that's where the the ink divers go so that way this doesn't get real yucky and if you switch colors you don't have to worry about um, the paper like seeping up onto the spongy thingy you just wipe off that little that little insert there and that's craft plastic and i've got that in my amazon list 
And I've got all these ready to go, and I even made me a little craft plastic for this insert too. It's just this piece. I just traced this onto the craft plastic and cut it out with a craft knife. Okay, so I have all of these ready to go, and it's just as simple as, oh, I did want to say, let's do the outside first. I did want to say that um, I accidentally dropped this outside piece onto that with the glue on it. Um, so I did want to say that on the inside, where you may have to trim down the side pieces because they might be too tall because they were left that away, that away. If you wanted to just do like an insert, line the inside of the box without cutting it all to pieces, you can. Um, but anyway, so I think, I don't guess it really matters which way this is. I'm just going to use some, I got gl art glitter glue all over me. So I'm just going to take my art glitter glue and I am going to mat the outside of the box. Everything's inked up. Everything's cut out, inked up. Sorry about my messy fingers. And my fingernails. Some of you have noticed that my fingernails look different. <laughs> and that's because they do. I went to do a backfill is what it's called when you have the white, the pink and the white. And I thought, you know what? I want to polish my fingernails. So I ended up shortening my nails, which I would have done anyway. Shortening my nails and then taking the white part off pretty much and just doing like a regular fill in, okay? And then I was gonna polish my nails. Well, guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to polish my nails. So they're looking kind of nasty right now, but oh, I guess they don't look too bad. But one day I'll get around to polishing them. We'll see. We will see. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna take your pieces and check them to make sure that they will fit right inside. And then you also want to check the side pieces. And if they're too tall, just take your scissors and just trim a little bit off. It's not that big a deal. And you want it to fit right inside there. So I've checked all mine already and I'm just going to go through and glue everything down. Okay, I am gonna take a sec. I've got it all matted inside and out, but I'm doing that little trick where I'm just going along and getting the tops again, just so that if I did miss, because it looks like I did miss a few times with the inking, I didn't get them all. That's okay. You just go back after the fact. Oops, did that one look like it was a little crooked? Right? And then here is that that craft plastic. You could use, you could use, um, what am I trying to say? You could <laughs> acetate, transparencies. Um, uh oh, oh wow, that one fit in there awful snuggly wuggly. Transparencies, you could use plastic like from sheet protectors. You could use anything you want to stick there. I just happen to have a whole bunch of scrap craft plastic. Let me show you. I have a whole bunch of pieces in here and then I just pull out of here and grab them and cut them to size. So that's what I do. So the next thing we need to do is make these lift boxes, right? So, I mean, it'll sit in here, but then I can't get the lid off. You see that? You see how it's a very low profile pad and I couldn't, I couldn't make these any shallower without it getting really flimsy. So we have to have the lift box underneath there so that when you stick it down on there, it's lifted up. It's a little bit more of a higher profile and that way when you can squeeze, whoops, you squeeze the sides if you need to, to get your lid off, but it should come off pretty easy. So let's check to make sure that this will fit. 
in our new box because again it's supposed to be snug and it fits yay right so i actually have some new ink pads coming i'm super excited but you should be able to oops right squeeze the sides so that you're holding on to it so that it doesn't come up and take your lid off right oops um yeah so i was thinking about having these or whether it permanently in there but i'm not going to do that because all the all the different ink pads are different so let me get all of my stuff together oh also also like these have feet and I have other feet, I have these feet, but I wanna match, I think I wanna get these matching feet for my ink stations. I don't know, I can't decide. But these are just a different color. They're the same feet. I don't know, they look good, right? Who cares? Well, maybe I will go ahead and add these feet. So these I got on Amazon and I'm pretty sure there's eight to a pack and I will put them in Amazon I'll link them in Amazon they come with little screws these little screws look like they're the color for the other one that's funny <laughs> that is funny all right so all I'm gonna do is we'll give this time to dry while I'm doing my lift box is I'm gonna take these this is Fabri-Tac by Beacon oh my printer is getting ready to talk to me and do you have to have these little feet no do they make it look like it's a special piece of furniture on your workspace? Yes. <laughs> Are they amazing? Absolutely. But again, you don't have to have them. They're just, it's just a fun, um, it's just a fun little detail. It makes it look like a piece of furniture, like a little jewelry box. It steps it up a notch. You could use other things. Like I've said before, you could use like uh, beads. You could use knobs. You could, you could use, what else could you use? Oh, you could use, um, oops. You could use these little Tim Holtz, where'd they go? Over there. The little Tim Holtz hitch posts. You can use these, like as little feet. How cute would that be? That would be adorable. Um, I'm not going to, but you could. You could use those, you could use anything. Just think outside the box. Think outside the box. Right, I'm gonna make sure these aren't like oozing too bad. And then I'm gonna flip it over. Yes, that is so cute. I just think it's adorable. Okay, let me do these. And these can be drying while I get the lift box together. Okay, so in the set of essentials, there is a page that says lift box for rectangle ink pads. This is the like title sheet of it. And this is what we're getting ready to make. So I've already made two of them. I needed to make three. And I printed this out onto that pretty paper and then um, I cut it out. So, whoops, I'm gonna finish cutting it out with you guys. So it looked like this. Of course, the whole thing was, was the pretty paper, which, you know, I kinda, it feels like a bit of a waste, but I can use it maybe for something else. I don't know. We'll see. So I've already done the two. And then this is what you use to trace the chipboard that's going to go inside. So I have scored this. You can see on the back here. Maybe. Can you see those? I've scored it here, 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 here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and prep those folds, burnish just slightly like this. All right, that easy. And then to cut it out, it's really simple. They're straight lines except for these little teeny tiny little tabs, but here's what I do. I just go straight from the top. I don't try to go eh, or, eh, or, you know what I mean? So, like here's another little diagonal cut. And here's a straight cut. 
and take that out and then I'll just go and cut that little bit off. And this is a cute little box. I feel like it could be used for other stuff too, but um, you guys give me some ideas. So there is the box cut out and you can put it together one of two ways. You can take this tab here and glue this to that, right? And that's what I did with these. Um, well, I did that. So you probably, you're going to have to do that regardless, but you could also wait until you fill it as well. So you can glue it there and then you can just fold these in and glue this over top like so if you wanted to or you can tuck them in right where's the one so this one if you can see that i just kind of folded these bits over top and glued that down um, i didn't even glue these yet they're just the one part's glued but the top and bottom are just tucked in so you can do either way whatever is easiest for you so i'm going to glue this down right here I like that. Right? And then I'm going to put these little tabs in and I'm going to tuck one part in like that. Okay. So now I need some chipboard or whatever stuff you've got that you can fill in inside of here. It takes for for these for this box I'm grabbing a bunch of my scraps that I have. It takes six layers of this medium weight chipboard. So, what would be the easiest thing to do here? I can do one, two, three maybe. So, for sure, for sure, you want two of them that are the perfect size. So, you can have one on top and one on bottom. And then the ones in between can be different sizes. can be smaller, is what I mean by different. So but you want two to be the perfect size. Oh, and look, I just happened to have, I was, I was grabbing all kinds of little scraps to fill those other two boxes. <laughs> but these are a perfect size for, for three of these. Or for six of these, I'm sorry, because I need six. You can use uh, fun foam, you could use the the um, foam tape if you've got that you could use corrugated, corrugated cardboard if you've got that whatever you got just try to use your scraps for it okay so now I'm going to cut these all of the part the other one apart here in just a second. I just need to make sure that they fit. Yep. Yeah. 
All right, so I've got all the pieces, and they're actually the right size. All of them are the right size. So that is six layers, and the, what you need to do if you're going to tuck them in, if you're going to tuck the bottom in, you just need to put one in first and then just kind of let it flop to the bottom so that this little tab doesn't stop you from getting those in there. All right, so six pieces. Fill that little box up, and then you just want to flip those over and tuck in your top just like that I'm gonna not that you need it you're not gonna really see it that often but I'm gonna ink these little edges up just real quick right so you can glue them shut if you want to I am NOT going to I don't see a need to at the moment but let's test it out I've already tested to make sure the ink pad fits Ooh, I need to be careful my feet might still be wet so yeah that fits perfectly perfect let me move this and then here is the uh -oh. what do i got here i've got the memento pad so i'm gonna stick this under there like that and stick that in here remember you gotta you gotta squeeze it in. Ah, there we go. And you want that. You want it to be tight. So there's my two. There's several prototypes here. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, and then some foam tape. I don't know what's inside here. I glued that one completely shut. Just a bunch of bits and pieces is what that is. But anyways, so here is another archival ink pad, and it goes in here like that so yeah <laughs> right so you just want to squeeze the sides a little bit so like if you're working you just want to squeeze just a little bit and pull that lid off right just as simple as that but sometimes if it's not on there super tight you don't have to do any kind of squeezing you just whoop. so but yeah so then you would have your little your little ink blenders right there and you'll be done and then here's the double Let's see, there's a black one. Let's put the black up here. And there's, that's a gray, but yeah. So that's it. That's all uh, I got for you today. I hope you guys are enjoying this little essentials set. And I hope that you're finding it useful for whatever ink pads that you use because it does matter. You know, like the universal one, all of these ink pads are gonna fit on it just fine. So you don't have to worry. So if you wanted to just make one set, you could make the universal ones, which will be next. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me today. And do let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Um, let me know if you think I should make a, if I should make another one of my crafty companion mini racks to match everything for the tape. This would be fun too if it had feet on it and it was sitting um, here on my workspace easy access because I have one up in my cubby but this one um, I don't usually have all these thicker bigger tapes out all the time so this one I just pulled in when I needed it so let me know if you think I should do that and yeah so next video will be the universal uh, ink station and then we'll move on to the garbage bows and the corner chomper thingy and this is just so much fun you guys I'm so excited okay all right you guys I will see you guys next time bye